So in today's video, I want to share how I became a software engineer. I've been a software engineer for about five years now, actually probably five years and a month or so now. Um, I'm currently an Android engineer at Zillow and uh, I landed my first job in September of 2018 working as Android engineer. So when I was uh, 15, I started learning some basic HTML and CSS. Um, I did this on my own. So I was learning a lot and really just diving into a lot of tutorials and blog posts and really just building out uh, what those tutorials were. And I learned a lot throughout that period. Um, and then I started uh, building my own sites for fun. Um, nothing that I posted live or anything at that time, um, but just um, learning and uh, testing different things and just trying to, to understand it, right? Um, and when I was 16 years old, I actually built a website for a small business in my hometown. And that was the very first live website I ever posted actually. And I worked closely with the owner of that business and built out a website for her. And I learned a lot throughout that process from from the code to also just the skills you need to, the soft skills you need to have when interacting with a client. That was great and I really loved it. From there, I understood that I actually wanted to go to school for computer science. So I went to uh, school and then started learning, you know, just the basics of computer science, like many uh, individuals that went through uh, the CS courses and stuff like that, um, you know, like C++. And, you know, it was fun, but uh, I didn't really have a huge love for it at the time, you know, because it's just the very basics of software engineering. You know, you're really just learning programming, not necessarily software engineering. And when I was a junior, I took a software engineering course where we were to pair up with three to four students and then um, build an Android app for an external client. And our external client was the department head of physics to, and the app was to aid in his research. So from there, a lot of us didn't really have any Android experience. You know, we, we took a Java class already and this was pre Kotlin, probably in 2016, maybe 2017. So anyways, I uh, really fell in love with Android development. I was spending more time outside of class working on this Android app and just learning Android development than I did on my entire course load, which isn't really you know, a good decision, but you know that's what I made at the time. And um, eventually when that class was over, um, it was at the spring semesters, I transitioned into a, a summer internship working on the Android app for him. He actually took some money out of his own research to fund this so that I could get paid uh, while I built the app, um, which was great. I really loved it. I was taking some summer classes as well um, and then just working on the Android app. After that summer was over, I uh, submitted a research project with him to so that I could continue working on this uh, project, but you know, under a research project. So that was funded. So I was able to work on it for the whole year, um, which was great. You know, I could get paid for it. And obviously I did a lot of extra things um, around that to submit that research project and also present it as well. But I loved it. And that's what I knew I wanted to do um, when I graduated was to become an Android engineer. When I graduated in 2018, it took about a three month job search to land an Android role. And uh, for a lot of people who are Android engineers, they kind of know that there's not a lot of entry level Android positions. Um, it's a very kind of niche thing. You know, you have Android engineers that are really good at it, so it's hard to break in. Um, but I was lucky after three months to land a position um, where I moved to Minneapolis downtown and then worked there for uh, about a year and a half. I learned a lot throughout my time. Um, but I wasn't really in love with this, uh, the, the project that we were working on. It was a software sales uh, enablement program and I just didn't really love it. So I shopped around for a different position and I actually landed one at a FinTech startup working on an app and pushing the technology, right? We were starting to use the newest technologies like Kotlin and um, different frameworks and libraries and stuff like that. And it was a lot more fast paced and really just fit what I liked. 
and I really loved that job um, for the majority of it. And then uh, I started looking for a new job about a year and a half after that and uh, landed a, a role at a health tech startup where we built an Android app and an iOS app that paired with a COVID-19 test uh, that you could take a picture of the test itself and it could tell you if you're negative or positive for COVID in real time. And that was great. I was uh, the main Android engineer on the team for the user experience side and I was the 19th employee at that startup. So we built out that team to I think about 38 people from when I joined um, and then the company was acquired by our partner. So I had a successful exit you know, I had equity that paid out, which was great. So I got a bonus and then, um, you know, I didn't get laid off, but other people did. And uh, anyways, you know, the, I didn't really like the culture of the new company. So I started looking around for a new position. And um, so I was there probably about 11 months. And then, um, you know, it just, it was a quick acquisition, moved on. And then I moved over to Weed Maps, working on their Android uh, cannabis delivery app. And that was a totally different culture than I was used to. Um, it was great, you know, a lot bigger team than I was used to. It was a company of like 600 people and I've only worked for companies less than 80. So it was definitely a huge change, but I learned a lot throughout that process and, um, you know, different processes for these larger Android teams and stuff like that. And uh, that company went through some financial issues and laid off uh, a lot of people like many tech companies did over that period. And so I uh, saw one of my old coworkers from the FinTech startup uh, join Zillow. So I reached out to him asking how it was. And then he actually put a referral in for me and I went through their interview process and uh, got an offer and uh, went through a little bit of negotiation, but um, then I signed it and I've been working at Zillow since. And I really love it. It's great. Um, I work on, you know, features that are used by millions of people and uh, it's just really cutting edge. And I, I've been learning a lot about just the whole Android um, architecture for large scale teams and stuff like that, and, um, which I've really been loving. Um, and I'm definitely going to be staying here for uh, a couple of years. I can see myself being here longer. Basically, you know, I grinded a lot of my time uh, growing up from learning HTML and CSS to learning Android development, working on it outside of class, then to uh, becoming an engineer. I did a lot of freelance during that time so that I could work on different projects and learn and make some more money on the side. And, uh, and now I'm an Android engineer at Zillow and I'm working towards a senior position. Hopefully that will be coming in uh, the near future. We'll see. Um, and then outside of being an engineer, I'm also a founder of a nonprofit called Adisky Foundation. Uh, we're a 501c3 charity. Um, I started that last year on the side of my full-time position, but that's a different video, so I won't be uh, spoiling that now. So anyways, that's basically how I became an Android engineer. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of work, a lot of uh, dedication, and um, definitely a lot of um, time spent uh, learning. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Um, I'm going to be posting more. Oh, uh, thanks.